Good morning, I'm Vince Lancey, and in today's market rundown, we have two topics to discuss. One is breaking news. We're breaking it in the West. It originates out of TASS, and the title we're giving it tentatively is Russia Increases Gold Buys by 733%. This is very significant, and we will get into the news and a little bit of cursory analysis as to why it is so important. The second is our premium analysis, which is entitled the 1974 U.S. plan to, quote, raid gold's price once and for all, which is really a little bit of a history lesson pulling off of transcripts and data and posted by Grant's interest rate observer. Now, he writes things in a very interesting, very enjoyable way to read. So we're going to paraphrase some of his quotes in that post. That'll be up at 4 p.m. It's really quite fascinating uh, because it proves everything that you thought was true actually is true. Okay. Let's look at the markets, and then we're going to focus almost entirely on the Russia increases gold buys by 733%. So here we go. That's the gold hourly chart. The dollar is down 8 at 101.19. The 10-year yield is 377, up 1. The S&P 500 is up two handles at 55.17. The VIX is 2072. Let's put that up for a second. Pretty cool chart. I mean, unless you're short. Um Gold is twenty five fourteen up twenty dollars and change and very stable up twenty dollars. Silver is twenty eight sixty six up thirty eight. Copper is four oh seven up a penny. Love to see that type of pricing. I'll get to that in a second. Gold silver down fifty four. WTI up nineteen. Natural gas up three. Crypto hated. Bitcoin breaks below 58,000 at 56 and change, down 1,200 Ethereum, 2388, minus 61. And I'm hating life because I'm long those uh, for a long time. Palladium and platinum both up. Palladium up 10, platinum up 26. And now, even though this pricing doesn't show it, it makes sense. Who has control over palladium more than any other country in the world? Russia. Now it starts to make a little bit of sense. Speculatively speaking, grains, soy, corn, wheat, down 10, down 2, down 5 and change. 1030, 397, and 575, respectively. Okay, what was my quick comment about these three here? You love to see this. When there's a BRICS announcement, essentially saying the BRICS are going to buy more gold, the Russian announcement, and that takes gold up. Put the, the daily up so you can see it, right? There's today's gold, and it takes silver along for the ride. I know silver is undervalued, but it took silver along for the ride. This isn't central bank buying. This is BRICS buying, and it leaves copper behind. That's also good because that means this isn't China buying. If silver and copper go up, you go overnight. It's like that's China, okay? This is the silver and gold buying is uniform coming out of Europe, coming out of Asia. It's not just China, right? It's not just Russia. There's some fear in the market now, I think. Let's get to the actual stories. Enough with my uh, uh, opinions. Russia increases gold buys by 733%. Okay, first, the homepage. Goldman Sachs report says stay golden. Uh, that's yesterday's market rundown. Uh, Bloomberg sell season. We'll touch on that again today. Illegal immigration problem. I need to get that off the top page right now. All right. Anyway, all right. Starting with the premium analysis, it's not out yet, so we'll blow through it quickly. In 1974, the U.S. had a plan to raid gold's price once and for all. In May 75, the U.S. duly announced plans to sell 500,000 ounces of gold intended to cause a big market slide and demonstrate to the international community that gold was 
too wildly erratic an asset on which to base monetary values. That's a quote from the uh, Grant's Interest Rate Observer. We have more quotes and we have some commentary and analysis and we break it down for you in a post coming out at 4 p.m. entitled the 1974 U.S. Plan to Rate Gold's Price Once and for All. Not only is it a history lesson, if you're not familiar with it, not only is it a confirmation of what you thought to be true, it's also well-written, right? It's it's James Grant, who I've been reading, by the way, since 93, 92, actually. All right, so here we go. What you've all come for, Russia increases gold buys by 733%. All right, there's the story, and it says Gold Fix News. That's because we wrote this. All right, uh, we're going to just take you right to the post so you can see it. Gold is up $20 this morning. This is likely the reason. Today, TASS News reported a significant increase in Russian gold buying for its next fiscal month. This could trigger the biggest seasonal rush into gold ever. That chart, yellow line down, sell season starts. Today, up $20, sell season could be repealed. Russia is set to spend $1.9 billion on foreign currency and gold purchases between September 6th and October 4th, according to the country's finance ministry. The daily allocation will be 8.2 billion rubles or 92 million U.S. dollars. Not a lot of money, but they're saying it. In total, the ministry will allocate 172.9 billion rubles, $1.9 billion under Russia's fiscal rule. The purchases will run over the next month with consistent daily transactions. For context, in the previous period from August 7th to September 5th, the ministry had earmarked 24.65 billion rubles for similar purchases with daily buying set at 1.12 billion rubles. The increase is significant on multiple levels, not the least of which is the coming BRICS summit hosted by Russia this year from October 20th to 22nd. See, BRICS gold and silver launch date is October 2024. For more, other coincident factors include the largest short position held by Western and American in particular, bullion bank swap dealers of all time, which ostensibly makes the banks vulnerable to rallies in gold price. That chart is by Randall Blava. He's a Goldfix founder, and he contributes charts to ideas that we come up with in our conversations. Thank you, Randall. Also, a big hat tip to Chris Marcus, who did a very nice, thorough explanation and write-up on the actual short position uh, that the bullion bank said, I think brought to his attention by Rafi. I'm not sure. So, you know, big hat tip to those guys. Also, so that's the first point. Also, for the last six years or so, September has been the month of poorest returns for gold, where it averaged down 3%. See, Bloomberg sell season started what it means for, for more. Uh, there's the chart, the Bloomberg chart. September is the worst month. I think it averages down 3.2% over the last seven years. Mind you, this is in context of something that we've talked about for over a decade now, and that is sell season, which starts in September and ends Halloween or a little bit thereafter. September is the worst month uh, as the initial out-of-the-gate selling comes. This announcement, if fulfilled, Russia's announcement, will certainly have an effect on the price of gold headed into the BRICS event, as well as the run-up to the presidential election. If the historical storm between September and October is weathered, the sell storm, I should say, it could be the biggest buy season ever. And we have an article on why that is true here. That's the end. We also include the task story. It's all there. Moving on. I don't know how you can move on from that, but it's just great news. Uh, mind you, there's always flip side implications, but let's just look at the news right now. All right. We're skipping uh, market news. I want to take a look at politics, geopolitics, and I titled it Build Back Brain Damage. Here's the three, story, the three stories that matter the most. President Joe Biden will block Nippon Steel's acquisition of U.S. Steel, number one. Number two, White House reportedly scrambling to put forward a new Israel-Hamas proposal. Draft accord could come next week or sooner. There is a strong perception that a ceasefire is slipping away. Vice President Kamala Harris called for a 28% capital gains tax on people earning a million dollars or more. So why build back brain damage? Because 
Build Back Better and the IRA, the Inflation Reduction Act, was predicated on something that we believe in, not necessarily the person doing it, and that is the U.S. economy must reinvent itself, go back to a manufacturing economy, away from a services economy, as a result of the world going on a cash basis. No credit, no futures, no bond futures, no borrowing, mercantilism. You buy it, you pay for it. And that means you have to have an economy, something that Luke Roman talks about uh, without using the word mercantilism, something that Luke Roman talks about frequently, and that is the current account must matter. Anyway, back to the story here. If you're spending money on manufacturing and you're spending money on building back better, you're denying our manufacturing by prohibiting Nippon Steel's acquisition. Now, I know you're going to push back and say, well, that's good. He's being American about it. That's right. But he's a moron, okay? They're all morons, and they're morons because I'm starting to sound like Jim Willie here. And, you know, he's right. They're all morons. They're morons because they know the strategy is to create manufacturing. But because they are morons, they can't bring themselves to do it until it's a crisis, okay? So... For example, Biden's administration, we need to build the chip factories back, right? So that starts with a strike by the builders of the chip factories because he's encouraging union leaders to have strikes. So the manufacturing facility doesn't get built on time, okay? Now, ignoring the steel industry, which is key to the future. And I'm not just talking about regular steel. I'm talking about specialty metals are the key for the next manufacturing industrial age. Okay, so why is he blocking the pond steel? Because U.S. steel is manufacturing. And you know what that means? That means U.S. steel is now negotiating with Joe Biden for a sweet deal to stay here. And here's the saddest part. It's not going to the building of the company. It's going to the executive's pockets. It just... When you treat a strategy like a tactic or and you wait for a crisis to do something about it, you end up being on the weak hand all the time. It's pathetic because I've been I, I studied the IRA and I studied the uh uh the build back better concepts and the companies that should be bought, and ASML is one of them, right? Okay, chip maker. And they're just spending money on giving people rebates and credits. They're not really building anything yet and it's pathetic and it's definitely a libertarian case for get government out of uh your pocket all right next story white house reportedly scrambling to put forward a new israel hamas proposal all right that's just crumbling right uh third one vice president kamala harris called for a 28 percent capital gains rate on people earning one million or more and there is the rub the whole we're going to tax unrealized capital gains Never happened. Never say never, but never happened. It kills capitalism. It's the Overton window. She moves the Overton window, and now she wants to increase capital gains tax. And people say, oh, at least it's not taxing unrealized capital gains. We can live with that. And that's what happens. Politics is bullshit and getting votes. Uh, all right. Data on deck. Uh, today, more PMI data. Right. And, you know, yesterday's was pretty significant as well. Friday is unemployment. Now, we do have attached at the bottom. We do have attached at the bottom a very quick guide to unemployment. Uh, you can look at the numbers, what have you. But it really comes down to uh, will unemployment be worse or better than expected? And it matters because of the, the storm uh, during last unemployment report, the uh, hurricane that created a lot of temporary layoffs. And then from the unemployment port report, you're going to be able to derive or uh, take a better educated guess as to if the Fed will cut 25 or 50 basis points, or if at all, who the hell knows? All right, take a quick look at the markets and be on our way. All right, gold's up 20 and stable. Right. The market, and we'll go back to the hourly, the market should do this as we approach 930, remember the LBMA, uh, this is their time to do something. If they're not doing something now, well, then that should tell you something. Uh, 
I think it's waiting for U.S. demand. If there's U.S. demand that's going to come in on the result of the Russian news, there probably won't be. Then there'll be an opportunity to sell it. If U.S. demand does come in for the Russian reason or any other reason, uh, then it's going to rally. I, I mean, if I had to guess, I'd say lower for the first hour. Uh, but after that, I have no idea. Mind you, everyone, you know, perpetual bull that I am, I'm short gold right now. You know, I have a couple put spreads on and I'm like, oh, this is sell season, right? But look at me, like sell season's being repealed. I'm happy. I'm losing money and I'm happy. That reminds me of a very gross joke, but all right, that's it. Uh, gold's up 21 bucks, silver, you know, keeping pace. Love to see that on news about gold. That means there are shorts in silver and they are covering. Copper, tracking, but no one really cares about it right now. Oil, bullish oil, but it's really gotten hammered. We got to wait for some news. I think buy season could be good for oil, but not yet. And we may have a piece of the puzzle. Why the hell has Palladium been doing so good? Eh, because Russia's longing. Have a great day. I'm Vince Lancey.